Please join me for our angels first, found on page four of this letter. Your merciful love, O oh God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O oh God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred <coughs> mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my misleading fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God our Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. Exalt, exalt over her, all you who are mourning over her. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breast. For thus says the Lord, Lo, I will spread prosperity over Jerusalem like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing torrent. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and bottled in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. In Jerusalem, you will find comfort. When you see this, your heart will rejoice and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Response to Ruth. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. <clears throat> Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God. His tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. 
Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who reviews me not, my prayer or his kindness. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the earth has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, and to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make troubles for me, for I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, alleluia. shall read the shorter form. At that time the Lord appointed seventy-two others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to him, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. <coughs> Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves, carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And to whatever house you enter first, say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. In continuing with our uh, pledge to offer some catechetical homily on the first weekend of each month, I thought it appropriate in light of what we have witnessed on our television screens and computer screens over the last number of years, the rage that people express and the fact that it's only gotten uh, more uh, irrational in its uh, rage. In fact, some of the people who rage now, they, there is a rationality behind it, or an irrationality. I, I don't know if you were exposed, but uh, they had, uh, they, they developed a whole culture that shows individuals and how they react on the social media. And they had one where a woman raged against the uh, overturning of Roe versus Wade, in which now the states can make their own choices. And the woman is possibly, I would say in her 60s, she looks older than I do in my 50s. I know that's not a good gauge, but yeah, she, she does look older. No offense. And she's wearing knee pads. And as she rages, she takes the pillow that she's holding, she throws it down right in front of her and then plops down on the pillow with her knee pads. That's a rational, smart person. You know, if you're gonna rage, you don't wanna hurt your knees. And then she got on the floor and she's raging and screaming and bellowing. 
Uh, and her dog actually walks in the video and looks at her like, what in the world is going on? But we see that now. In fact, we see that companies over the month of June posted rainbows on all their accounts, especially their social media accounts. And everything you saw was rainbows, rainbows, rainbows. And then when that same company went to the Middle East, they went without their rainbows. So they pandered here. And then when they go to the Middle East, no pandering in the Middle East. None of that is allowed. And we see people who will go on social media who will rage and say that if a person expresses an idea or a thought different from them, that person needs to be canceled. In fact, uh, they go after people. If you say the truth, you need to be canceled. Because they say words are now violent. Words are violent. We, as children, have the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. Now, words are worse than sticks and stones. Especially if people express ideas different from what you hold. In fact, you, you may remember a few years ago, they had the idea that you should go around and punch Nazis. I mean, let's be honest. How many Nazis do we see walking around every day, you know, flying with the Nazis and Simbri? None. I, I, 52 years I've not seen one person walking around flying the Nazi and Simbri. Uh, but yet when you really look into it, their idea is anybody who disagrees with you, that person is a Nazi and needs to be dealt with appropriately. And at the different levels of names that people are called, <coughs> racism it almost doesn't exist anymore because now everything is racist. Sexism, misogyny, supporting the patrimony, bigotry, all these things lose their meaning because they're thrown around so much about everything. So then now whenever you try to say something important, it loses its meaning. In all of this, we who are Christians, we try to cope with society. We try to interact with people in society. And for a long time, it was thought that if only we can evangelize them, give them God, teach them God, then they would convert. They would come around, whatever words we use. I don't know if that is accurate. And I say this possibly, and I mention I could be wrong. I could always be wrong. I always throw that out there. But as I expressed on Friday, when you recently they did a video talking about these high school students who now portray themselves as uh, animals and want to be addressed, their pronouns, as animals. They're called furries. And so they will go around in their school on all fours and they will interact as a, they, my God, you saw the video, the girl is a cat and the boy sat next to her, he's the dog. And they, they start, the, the dog and the cat is singing and barking in the middle of the classroom. How can a teacher tell the class when you've got to, okay, little Susie, well, she's not little Susie today, she is uh, mean as the cat. And, and okay, well, he's not Bob, he is uh, Bob Tail the dog. I, I, I'm just making names up. But how do you work with all of that? How do you convince them? You can't. You really can't. Because their arguments are based in emotions. I feel today this way, therefore you need to address me in this fashion. And truth gets placed to the side. 
Well, it's no longer enough to try to walk in and say, God exists. We need to go in and we need to be able to say, God is necessary. Not that he just exists. That's not enough. God is necessary is where we should devote ourselves. In explaining why he is necessary in my life and in your life, why he is necessary in the life of our society. God is necessary. There's an old statement from the book of Proverbs. Basically, and I paraphrase, it's chapter 9. And I put this on the homily handout in your bulletin. But the idea is without God, there is no wisdom. And you look around society today, you look at the different things going on. Where is the wisdom in this madness? It's very hard to find wisdom in this chaos. Without God, there is no wisdom. So God is necessary. He is necessary for the establishment and the continuance of morality. For our society to be a moral society, for we as individuals to be moral, we need the Christian God. We need God. He is necessary. I'll give you a little silly example, but one that I hope emphasizes the point, is when we were growing up, whether you as children were growing up or the way you raised your children, you emphasize one thing, respect of parents. For we understood the commandment, honor your father and your mother. That was important to us. And so we did to the best of our abilities. Did we fall on uh, sometimes and not respect? Yes, I think we could all say we did. As individuals, do our children sometimes disrespect? Yes, they do, <laughs> especially in the high school age, when we as kids thought we knew more than our parents. Now, in saying all of that, honor the father and the mother. When we were disrespectful, and we felt bad about it, we went to confession because we were disrespectful. Did we go because we broke a law well, of the state of Alabama? No. Did we go because we broke a law from the United States? No. He carried more weight because we viewed that as something God asked of us. And because God asked us to live in that moral setting of being respectful to the parents, honoring them, Whenever we were a failure in that category, it hit us more than just breaking a local law. How many people go to confession because they exceeded the 40 mile an hour speed limit <laughs> that's right outside on Highway 43 here? Nobody. I've yet to hear one confession. Father, forgive me for I sped coming to church. Nobody has ever confessed that. Probably in the history of the world. No one's ever, I, I would drive you too fast to get to church. No. But confess I broke a law that God asked me. I was immoral in that way. Yes, we all do. The modern society that we live in today will argue, but other cultures live moral lives and they don't have your Christian God or as they call it and I and I see this too often sadly people will say the invisible best friend that you Christian has that lives up in the sky you can be moral without him and I say okay proof what is your examples and then what happens? We get shouted down. We're called all kinds of vile names. Because there is no proof. 
You can look and pick out various ancient cultures and say, yes, we can see in some ways they live moral lives. We can look at modern cultures today and say, yes, in some ways they live. But might I offer you this? As much as they will say, but look at Christians, the Inquisition, the Crusades, the priest scandals. Look how bad Christians are. Yes. Yes, we've done these things. But conversely, flip the coin over. Look at what Christianity, men and women, who have found a moral foundation in Christianity, <coughs> the God, the Christian God, look at what they have contributed to society. Who fought to end slavery? Christians did. Because they had that understanding. Who fought to make sure that minorities and women were given rights? Christians did. Who fought to make sure that even in the darkest times of our history, education would continue to be passed on. Christians did. The yell abortion now is health care. Who gave the world health care in its institutional form? Who founded hospitals, orphanages, inevitably nursing homes? And all these that came out of that, Christians did. Who's some of the most generous people when natural catastrophes happen? Christians are. You can go down a list, a plethora, and see so many times when there is a problem. Who's the first one who runs in that door? A Christian influenced by their God driven morality. God is necessary for us to have a moral society, for us to be moral individuals. That is what we should be arguing for every day. The necessity of God. By the way we live our own lives. And by the examples that we can give of the lives of others. Is God, does he exist? Yes. But it's not enough. We must convince the world that he is necessary. But without God, there is no wisdom. Now, might the God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now profess our faith and our creed. Ah, the beings of one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, right from right, to the God from future God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord.
the giver of life, the mercy of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. For Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy with the people entrusted to their charge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us gathered in the sacred place by faith and devotion and by love and reverence for God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, emotional, or mental illnesses, that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and for all the prayers we call from the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, joined to the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear and today, on the 3rd of July, which the Church reserves for the feast day of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray for his intercession for all the members of our parish, St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray for the living and the deceased, for all of you, for those watching on video, this Mass to be prayed today. <coughs> Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor to the Blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for I have been involved in the Holy Church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gave to your holy people. He stretched out his hands to endure his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy their holy gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chops. Then once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, God, for taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all stress. 
in a way of the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Live not on our cities, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. We take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join me for our communion verse found on page 90 of your missile We'll do the first reading. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him.
let us pray. Grant we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to pray. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass is ended. Go in peace. Do you mind having a seat just for a moment as our ushers take up our second collection? As you know, this is the first of the month, and so our second collection is for our building and maintenance fund. Thank you for your generosity. And speaking of building and maintenance, I was asked last night how we are progressing toward our goal uh, to build a new parish church in Saraland. Uh, we were doing well, but with uh, the current economic crisis and inflation with everything going up the way it has, the project that we wanted five years ago, that we couldn't even get there now. Could we? So well, I've spoken with a new group of people, <coughs> reconstituted a new committee, we're looking at what is reasonable, what we can do to move to Sarah Land. Uh, I told them, give me a puck tip and I'm happy, but with air conditioning. But they said, no, they're going to look at uh, more cost effective ways than what we originally were looking at. Uh, how would you work with the land instead of moving a lot of excess dirt around so it's just things like that we're going to have to look at. But we were doing well, and then the bottom fell out. So uh, we'll just have to wade through all of this, okay? I hope that helps out a little bit. Uh, now let us stand and pray our prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael, give our hands. Defend us the Thank you. 